forest ranger discovers hidden secrets deep within a secluded woodland that leads him to a strange structure. But before we start, please make sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you never miss an upload from us. When environmental also, service leave a director like right now. Mark Andre was exploring the Arcata Community Forest in California, he came across something remarkable that would stop him in his tracks. In preparation for forest harvesting, Andre spent his career learning every inch of this forest, what was shocked to discover something he had never seen in these woods before. While deep in the forest marking trees for harvest, Andre noticed a shadowy object enveloped in the trees. Stunned to discover something foreign in the woods, he moved closer to get a better look. As he inched his way closer, Andre couldn't believe what was standing in front of him. He thought he knew the forest inside and out, but now he wasn't so sure. Mark Andre hadn't explored this section of the forest since 1985 as it was so deep in the wilderness, but on this day, he was staring at something that made the forest a lot more intriguing. Miles inside the depths of the forest lay a makeshift cabin with a padlock securing the entrance. Curious and suspicious, Andre wondered what would be inside, but had no idea. Although he was fascinated to find something so skillfully built in the middle of the woods, he was concerned that it was built on private property, which would ultimately make it an illegal build. As a forest ranger, Andre was used to finding debris from makeshift huts that people made seeking shelter in the woods. However, this was no ordinary hut. This was a mini home that was built with great care and attention to detail. The quaint wooden cabin was impressively decorated with a peaked roof and a front porch accompanied by an awning. The inside walls were protected by plywood and tarps along with windows. The entire cabin was approximately 8 by 12 feet and stood at about 15 feet tall. I didn't see it until I was 12 feet from it, Mark Andre explained in an interview. It is the perfect out-of-the-way spot where it wouldn't be detected. Andre's comment makes it clear that the only way the builder could have constructed this without anyone knowing was because of its desolate location. Andre noticed that there were no signs of littering or environmental destructions, which are common when discovering huts or dens in the woods. Whoever lived here respected this land as their home. Andre also noticed zero signs of footpaths or trails surrounding the site, an indication that the owner never wanted it to be found. Andre was very eager to take a look inside, but he couldn't be certain the cabin was empty. He decided to call forest technicians Javier Noguera and Nick Manfredonia for assistance along with a park ranger, Heidi Grosman. With the help of his colleagues, Andre and his team cut the padlock of the door and prepared themselves for what or who could possibly be inside. With her gun drawn, park ranger Heidi Grosman shouted, Arcade police! to prompt a response, but no one replied. The team then began to investigate inside the cabin to figure out who the owner was. The group quickly noticed just how tidy and well-kept the interior of this cute little lodge was. Jars of cooking ingredients neatly lined the kitchen shelves, and it was clear that the team was standing in somebody's handcrafted home. In the living room area, there was a kettle and next to it, a wooden chair. The owner even had a pot-bellied stove for cooking and keeping the cabin warm. With all of these amenities, it sure seemed that someone was currently living in this hidden home. Continuing their exploration, the group discovered a bookshelf that gave them a clue as to how old the house's owner was. Books like Catch Me If You Can and Medicinal Plants suggested the resident of the cabin was an older person. The person who seemingly lived so comfortably in this house also had a stack of old cassette tapes, but the team was still suspicious as to who exactly owned all of these items and what their story was. Along the walls inside the cabin, there were posters with inspirational messages and political opinions, giving the team more of an insight into who lived there. One poster titled Different Everywhere featured an image of a nude woman holding a knife that read, Every community creates its own outlaws. The team of forest technicians and park rangers even found a handwritten note with a list of things to do and get. The list included build bench, extend brush wall, get tongs, and even the date, April 17th, 2014, with some chores not yet ticked off. The team were beginning to establish a timeline for how long the cabin had been occupied. They found a copy of Humboldt State University's The Lumberjack newspaper, which was dated March 25th of 2015. While investigating the cabin, the group identified two driver's licenses and thought they had discovered the creator of this eccentric little house. However, the licenses belonged to two different people and sadly didn't lead them to find the owner of the house. And little did they know, the team was quickly running out of time to gather evidence. 
While the team was aware that this home was somebody's prized possession, they also had to follow the laws which stated that the cabin was built on private property of a nature refuge and therefore the house was illegally constructed. Andre and his team left an eviction notice for the occupant and walked away from the cabin, giving the owner time to leave the property. Shortly after, on a later date, the authorities returned to the cabin to check in on the occupant and ensure that they were leaving the premises. However, to their surprise, there was no cabin to be found. The owner of the wooded cabin hastily dismantled and packed up all of their belongings before the authorities returned. According to one of the environmental service rangers, that's the cleanest camp cleanup I've ever seen. There wasn't a nail, not even a gum wrapper left behind. The only thing that was left was a poignant message for the authorities. The only thing the inhabitant of the secluded cabin left behind was a charcoal drawing squatter symbol. The symbol, which originated in 1979, symbolizes the occupants of an abandoned or unoccupied building of area or land. Sadly, the person who left the symbol at the site of the cabin was making a clear message to the authorities that this had been their home. Although the authorities never figured out who lived there, the clues to who did certainly paint the picture of an impressively artistic person who enjoys their solitude a classical novel, and being surrounded by nature. A mysterious safe. While rummaging through her grand aunt's house after inheriting it, one German woman stumbled upon a big, old, rusty metal trunk. Although she had no idea what was inside, she knew the contents had to be valuable, because of how the safe's heavy bolts were locked tight. Sitting in the empty house and being face to face with her grand aunt's secrets, the woman was certainly apprehensive about the contents of this heavy metal box. As the safe was so securely shut, anyone would have been spooked to open something that was obviously meant to stay closed. At a glance, the woman knew she would have a difficult task on her hands if she tried to open the safe, which led her to worry about what could lie inside this mystery box. Fortunately, luck was on her side and she finally found the key. Even though she had the key, the rust covering the safe made her doubtful as to whether or not she would be able to open it. But as soon as she tried, presto, the safe was open, as if it was still the century that the safe had been crafted in. When she opened the safe, the woman noticed nothing surprising jumping out at her. In fact, all that she saw was an empty tray. But knowing that something could be hidden beneath the tray intrigued her more. Why would her great aunt have gone to such great lengths to hide her belongings? When she lifted the tray, the woman discovered some random objects inside that made her question why her grand aunt would hide them in such a secure location. Surely an old tin of Nivea moisturizer wasn't so valuable that it should be locked under a key. Inside the safe's second compartment lay a bunch of old photographs, postcards, and books. It was only when the woman examined these items more closely that she discovered something surprising about her great aunt's past. The woman knew that her aunt had fled Russia in the 1940s during the Second World War and settled in Hamburg. However, her life in Germany during this time might have been controversial if she felt the need to hide these belongings from her family for years. The woman did not recognize all of the faces in the photographs. However, she did unsettlingly recognize the title of one of her aunt's books, Adolf Hitler's Mein Kampf. Although publications of Hitler's book are not limited and copies are easy to find. The fact that it was in her aunt's possession during the time of Hitler's reign concerned the woman. After doing some research, the woman could tell that the book was published in 1943, just before the end of World War II. A book like this could be auctioned for its historical context and could possibly sell for approximately $350. However, the book is still a manifesto for Hitler's ethnic cleansing and represents the brutality and terror of Europe when he was in power. So the woman felt torn about profiting off of it. While rummaging through her aunt's belongings, the woman also came across a much-used dog-eared copy of the classical novel Rob Roy by Sir Walter Scott. The simple feel and smell of the book made the woman feel like she was back in time. Among these books and photographs, the woman's great aunt even had a copy of the novella Lady and the Tramp before it was adapted into the screenplay that we all know and love. The copy of Lady and the Tramp found in the secretive metal safe was published in German in 1953, just two years before the release of the movie. It baffled the woman to think why a Disney classic would be hidden away with Nazi paraphernalia. Looking through the many photographs hidden away in the safe, the woman was not exactly certain who was staring back at her, but she guessed that the young girl was her grandmother. Even so, she was emotionally moved just looking at the faces of her family from the past. 
The woman was emotional to find the pictures of her grandfather in the 1950s while he was in his prime and riding a motorbike, bringing her face to face with her own family history, while continuing her search through her aunt's sentimental belongings. The woman found the photographs of young boys who seemed to be part of Hitler's youth, an organization for young boys within the Nazi party. Already shocked to find photos of young boys who had been recruited by the Nazi party, the woman was confused as to who the people in her great aunt's photographs were. Trying to identify the faces, she assumed that they had a close relationship with her great aunt and may have been family members because of how safely the pictures were kept for decades. As well as finding books from Hitler's reign of terror, her niece also found a plethora of war-related documents. Among the memorabilia, she found political propaganda, media articles, and plenty of war-related postcards. The woman's great-aunt had a postcard from 1916 of a soldier kissing a woman before he went off to fight in the war. The sad truth behind her aunt's personal belongings is that most of the contents were related to war, showing us the heartbreaking reality of living in Europe during that time. Hidden away in the safe, the woman's grand-aunt kept many postcards that clearly showed the Nazi government stamp on the back. In Germany, during the time of Hitler's reign, these stamps were necessary when sending mail, which meant that the government always kept tabs on what you sent and who you were sending it to. Another postcard that the woman found dated back to the First World War and showed two models posing with a soldier and a nurse in order to motivate young men and women to enroll in these professions. As there was limited access to media outlets such as radio and newspapers, news of the war was printed on postcards to bring as much coverage as possible to people. This postcard shows an image of a house destroyed in the war, and below it reads, a house destroyed by the enemy. Going through her grand aunt's belongings brought the woman in touch with the reality of the 1940s in Germany, especially when she came across her great aunt's tin of Nivea cream. It was unknown to her niece why she kept these safe, but nonetheless, they were a time capsule into the past. This image, also found in the safe, shows the Kaiser's heir, German emperor during World War I. Pictures similar to this one would have been commonly placed in German households to show respect for their ruler.